Let everybody know that we were here tonight. Curry, another long distance shot. It's good. You know, try to create some momentum. Where would you put this in his finals performance resume? I think probably number one. I don't rate my performances. We should just win the game. Get some contact. Layup, got it, and one. You and I, we are not alike. That shot was ridiculous. But you don't shine when they hit a light. Oh, Steph Curry from way downtown. Curry, three-pointer. Bang! 2-2 two is way better than 3-1 going home, so job well done tonight. is Jalen Rose. I am David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What, what is up, it Joe? that we do? Boss up and get the people what they want. Game four on Friday night, Steph Curry was absolutely dominant on fire, bringing the Warriors even in the series at 2-2. In advance of tonight's game five, Ime Udoka was asked, how do you guard Steph Curry? And here is what he said. We haven't gone after him much. Honestly, like like Durant or some of those other teams, and some is due to the personnel he has behind him and the playmakers that he has. Um, for us, we rely on our one-on-one defense, our guys using our length contest and then our bigs being up. As I mentioned, if we are playing the right way on the other end, the defense has been fine. Emi Udoka doesn't seem concerned, says the defense is fine, but Steph Curry has been a problem. What do you expect from Steph this evening? I expect for him to understand the assignment. Like I told you, he was going to get into the NBA Finals and understand that I'm winning Finals MVP, win, lose, or draw. And he's been fantastic, averaging 35, Jacoby. And being in the gym, as you know, watching him make some of those shots, it's effortless how all he needs is an inch, and all of a sudden it seems like he takes a mile. And the one thing about Steph, as a terrific ball handler, he'll get out in transition, get a layup like that, get a screen like that from Wiggs, and then all of a sudden he's hot, shooting runners off one foot, going left off the dribble, going right off the dribble, as he makes says. So when he says making them work, I mean probably putting a lot of more pressure on him, try to take away his airspace, but that's easier said than done because he is Steph Curry and he got unlimited range. Absolutely, and one thing that's been interesting as this series has developed is before it started, we talked about all the motion offense and how he runs off the of screens and how he moves so much without the ball, but they've been using him a lot in pick and roll situations with, as, with him as the ball handler. And he just, as you mentioned, needs a sliver of space, just a tiny sliver of space to get his shot off, and it's been going in at a crazy clip. What do you think about the way that they sort of changed their offense in the series? Well, the one thing about Steph, he's just being uber aggressive. And once he gets going, the team starts treating him like Wu-Tang Clan. They keep feeding you and feeding you and feeding you. And he equal opportunity employer. Look, that, that's Jason Tatum on his right shoulder, Jacoby. He was on his right shoulder. He still made it. That's, that's an incredible shot maker in Steph Curry. And so some of those shots, you, you, you just got to, you got to do what I said when I ran into him after the game. Just acknowledge it was historic and hope that it doesn't continue to happen. That's what you do. It's been a great series for Steph Curry so far. It's an even series. It's a good finals. And here is what Jalen Brown, your namesake of the Celtics, had to say about the Celtics' mindset heading into game five tonight. Obviously, I think we could be in a better position than we're in, um, but we're not. Uh, it's 2-2. Um, still nothing to hang your head about. A lot of great basketball still in front of us. So we take what our mistakes and what we learn from and you apply it as best you can going forward. Um, I, I still think we're in a great spot, so I'm excited to see how we respond. It's the, the biggest stage in the world, you know, and I'll take our group, our guys um, versus anybody. 7-0 after a loss, the Celtics are this postseason. They're even in the series. He says they're in a great spot, even though they haven't gotten good performances from Jason Tatum. Do you expect Tatum to sort of finally sort of be the superstar that we all saw earlier, specifically against the Bucks? So the one thing about Tatum, Jacoby, and I was talking about this after game one or two in this series, Jason Tatum seems to miss a lot of shots in the restricted area. Yep. You know how you like to say, take your knuckles to the rim or go dunk it. We talked all season about how he's gotten stronger and, and able to play through contact. And his three-point shooting ability 
has been better than his two-point shooting ability. As a matter of fact, he's been historically one of the worst two-point shooters in the NBA Finals. So that won't win the Boston Celtics the championship. You need your best players to play their best on the biggest stage. And in Golden State, that's what they're going to need from him if they're going to make this a series that they can actually win. Jalen, you look at these numbers. I mean, it just looks crazy when you look at the, you know, how, how nine, eight and a half points ahead of him is Kenyon Martin in two-point shots in the NBA Finals. I expect him to be better. Do you think it's the shoulder that is bothering him? Uh, well, at this point in the season, possibly, but we're not, we not, like Biggie said, we live out there, so don't go there. It's, you know, everybody playing with something, and I'm pretty sure he'll let you, he'll let you know that he's playing through some pain there also, but, but Jacoby, he just got to be better. He got to play through contact, got to play stronger, and got to be more aggressive. Jalen Brown has been the most effective player in his Celtics uniform. He sort of carried them, especially early in games. He started that big run in the fourth quarter. We all talk about the three-point shooting, but it was Jalen Brown who started that fourth quarter of game one to get them the win on the road. Do you expect a big game from him this evening? Well, he's going back to the Bay where he attended college, represents the A, that's where he's from. But I appreciate his shot making. Like, not only catch and shoot, but then off the dribble. And his aggression, in particular, in the first half, first quarter, has been something that they were able to rally in game three of, game three around. And so I anticipate he's going to need to come out with that same aggression. But also, you talked about Tatum, you talked about Brown. If they get over 20, you're going to need somebody else to get over 22. So is that going to be Marcus Smart? Is that going to be Al Horford? You know, I love the energy that Time Lord is always bringing, catching lobs, blocking shots. But they're going to need one of those other two guys like Horford and Smart to get you 20 as well. One of the storylines coming out of Friday night's game four was Draymond Green not playing his normal rotation in the fourth quarter, came into the game with about four minutes left. Coach Kerr spoke about Draymond in his series so far. Here's what he had to say. Have you challenged him in any way ahead of this next game? Just anything that... Nope. You know, no, no, no. Yep. He's Draymond's Draymond. He's gonna he's gonna bring it every night, and everybody's locked in on his scoring. The scoring has always been kind of the last thing that we need from him. We need his defense, his energy, his force, his competitiveness, and um, down the stretch of, of the game, he made made huge plays at both ends. Kerr makes a good point. Yeah, he was quote unquote benched a bit, but when he did come in under four minutes, he had a couple assists, he had a couple of steals, some great defensive plays. What do you think about Draymond's sort of poor performance thus far in this series and his effectiveness? Well, at this point of the season, clearly the NBA Finals, it's all about winning. So when you win the game, this looks a little different the next day. And as a veteran player, a championship player, of course, he don't like to be subbed offense for defense late in the game. No, no player at, at, at of his stature is going to like that. But like I always say, it's not what happens to you, it's what you do about it. And that's the thing about a team game. It ain't only about you. We're trying to win the game. And so when they did put him back in, he did grab a rebound. I believe he did get an assist. He did play with toughness. He did help him close out the game. And that's the most important thing. You want to be in the final possession. And fortunately for him, their defense was the catalyst for them to close that game out. But a lot of people talking about it. But those people are the ones closest to him. Mama Green talking about it. Mm -hmm. I love her so much representing who are we, Saginaw Pride. And then I saw the Hall of Fame mogul, Irvin Magic Johnson. He tweeting about it. He got his Twitter fingers out. He said Draymond going to have a triple-double in the game five, going back to the Bay. So everybody's talking about it. I'm looking forward to see how he performs. If you haven't seen his mom's tweet, it's absolutely hilarious. She kind of roasts her own son. She's like, I don't recognize this person either. And, of course, Draymond. <laughs> Four games, averaging about four points, but he has also put up four podcasts during these finals at least. Hopefully he will end up averaging more points than total podcasts in the series. Now, Jalen, someone else we should be discussing is, we always ask who that second warrior is going to be. Is it going to be Klay Thompson? Is it going to be Jordan Poole? Is it going to be Andrew Wiggins? And Andrew Wiggins has sort of established himself as the second most important player in the Warriors uniform, in my opinion. What do you think about sort of Andrew Wiggins as the second weapon for the Warriors? Well, if they're going to win a series, the second weapon has to be Klay Thompson. The Celtics defense has done a terrific job of taking away Jordan Poole's airspace. 
and not giving him the dribbles to really get, get his shot going. But for Wiggins, he continues to get out in transition. You notice all of those are driving towards the basket. Aggression plays, offensive rebounds, cuts, playing with force. And now Otto Porter, who started the game, gets a chance to dribble drive and kicks it out to Wiggs, not the other way around. But again, continuing to try to get two feet in the paint, making a concerted effort and playing well on D. And yep. also, I know a lot of people look, look at Bielitsa and they tease him because they look at his body type and it seems like guys should be dribble driving around him. But he been locking up Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, if you look at the stats. And so he and Wiggins, those guys playing deep, ain't really getting discussed. But now all of a sudden, his rebound that comes into play, what did he have, 17 boards 16. also? So he been playing tough. Yeah, 16 rebounds and some offensive rebounds that were just absolute momentum killers for the Celtics. The Celtics have a good spot, they have a good possession, and then all of a sudden Wiggins gets an offensive rebound puts the ball back in. Those were big in Game 4. We'll see what he can do tonight in Game 5. But before we get back to discussing Game 5 of the NBA Finals this evening, we have some news that matters. Jalen Rose, in Kenya, all the way over in Kenya, you go to the local barbershop, what are you going to see? In Kenya, this isn't Washington, D.C., this isn't L.A., this isn't Boston, this is Kenya, where your head is up in the barbershop. <laughs> Renaissance man, international industry tastemaker. We've made it, Jacoby, look at that. I must make it to the motherland. When this season ends, I am going. I promise you, I appreciate the love. Got to go and visit. See, I, I like this Jalen Rose with the waves and the fade, but if you look at these pictures, not a lot of variety. <laughs> you know what I mean? The two dudes are bald. It's just like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to show a little variety. Like, see, I've seen Jalen Rose with more variety on his head in the last six months than this entire barbershop with the picture. But, of course, you always say you're best known in what places, Mr. Rose? Best known in delivery rooms and international barbershops. I appreciate the love. We have a lot more to discuss, and we also have some pretty interesting news from Anthony Davis. He said something that kind of surprised me, and I can't wait to hear Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, we started this as a podcast over 10 years ago. Now it seems like everyone has a podcast. Tyreek Hill just started a podcast, and episode one, he had something pretty interesting to say. Tua or Patrick Mahomes, obviously, like, I'm, I'm going to go with 1-5 as the, the strongest arm. But as far as accuracy-wise, I'm going with Tua all day. That was the debut of his podcast, It Needed to Be Said. I guess he needed to say that Tua Tungavailoa is more accurate than Patrick Mahomes, Jalen? So I don't have to tell you and the pod father who have ushered in this new era of podcast glory that we now see with former professional athletes, now current athletes. And so, you know, you get relaxed in that set and you sit back. Yep. It's your first show. You know what I mean? You got to say something interesting. Miami just gave you over 100 mil. You back at the crib. You've been hanging around your fam and your peeps. You feeling real good. And, of course, you got to boost Tua. That's your new quarterback. You mm -hmm. can't keep looking in the rearview mirror talking about what Patrick Mahomes was. You got to boost two of to make him feel like he's that deal and that you're going to help make him something super special. So I'm not mad at this. You know, but when is Tua throwing to him? In practice. Not a game. Not a game. <laughs> no. So when he said he want to hit it like like, like that and, and, go to the, and go to the house, you know, I, I'm looking forward to see, seeing them make plays like that. Tua was doing that at Alabama. He shows shades of that with Miami. I think he's going to be able to do it this year. I'm looking forward to seeing it happen. I also think one of the things about Tua, his reputation, is that he doesn't go deep that much, so maybe Tyreek Hill being on the field will help sort of expand that part of Tua's game. Big year for Tua, sort of a make-or-break year at the quarterback position for the Dolphins. Now, Jalen, sometimes there are stories in the world of sports where I'm just like, I need to know what Jalen Rose thinks about this. So Anthony Davis said that he hasn't touched a basketball or shot a basketball since April 5th, I believe, was the date that he picked. I'm shocked by this as someone who's shooting around with his kids just this weekend. Jalen, what do you think about Anthony Davis not touching a basketball in over two months? 
So this is when keeping it real goes wrong. And like Kara said, it's not about a salary, it's all about reality. And so when you say this, it makes people think that you're not addicted to your craft because you're not maniacally doing it 24-7, 365. Especially when you've had some injuries this year, your team didn't make the playoffs, you didn't meet your goals, you just got a new coach, the new coach is going to implement trying to make you into a top 10 player again and competing like that on a nightly basis. And so when you now hear, oh, he haven't shot, then it's like, oh, he's not invested for those on the outside looking in. But there are a lot of factors that go in that. Number one, he could be trying to get healthy. The one thing I'll tell you about being retired, Jacoby, Mm -hmm. is I didn't want to work out because my body hurt. You know what I mean? Like, and, and it's not fun to play or work out when your body hurts. So he probably like, I'm trying to get 110% before I start to work out again. But it does seem a little odd to see to, to say you haven't shot one time. It would seem like you shoot something into the toilet or shoot something <laughs> into the trash can. Trash can. Or, yeah, Kobe. You know, you got a big crib. You know, I know you walk through the gym in your house every now and then or something. So, uh, yeah, it, it does seem a little odd when you think about it that way. Well, also, I'm glad you mentioned the big crib because I was thinking to myself, he's got to have a basketball court at the crib. Like, just one day, you don't just want to, like, walk over and get some shots up. Like, if I had a basketball court in my crib, I would not go three days without taking a shot. But apparently, Anthony Davis isn't built like that. Jalen, this weekend was a monumentous weekend for the city of Detroit and specifically the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. Please take us through what happened this weekend. Forever grateful, the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, open enrollment, tuition-free public charter high school. We get zero state funding for our facility. We do not have a, 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 a network. We're not a part of a network. We're a nine through 16 model. And for us to be able to graduate 100% of our scholars this weekend was such an honor. Our eighth graduating class, Jacoby, I have so many people to thank, the staff, the scholars, the donors, people like yourself that have taken their time, their energy, their passion, their money to give back to the young people of Detroit. I'm forever grateful. We've come so far. We still have so very far to go. We're raising $10 million to expand our facility. I'm looking forward to making that happen for the northwest side of Detroit and for our JRLA scholars. But we are JRLA, inner learner, exit a leader. You can go to jrladetroit.com if you want to help out. And I was lucky enough to go to one of these ceremonies. And it's not just the scholars that walk across the stage to get their diplomas. It's all of the families and the support groups, the people that come with them. Thousands of lives have been affected by JRLA. Congratulations to the scholars and to yourself and to the staff. Jalen, it's almost time. Game five is just hours away. We're going to get you ready for it right after this. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby. (laughs) 